All right, let's take a look at this activity. We're gonna do some of the first parts together. So the first thing you need to do is write the equation for cellular respiration. We're talking about do seeds do cellular respiration. We're gonna look at a couple different types of seeds here. Next up, you said, hey, today we're gonna be looking at seeds to determine factors that influence cellular respiration. Your little brother who was in kindergarten asks you what a seed is, what do you tell him? So go ahead, write down a definition of a seed or what you would tell him. It doesn't have to be super, super accurate. Um, if you want, feel free to Google an answer. Down here, we have matching the correct part. So there's some descriptions here and you should be able to use the description um, or just by looking at it, okay, in order to answer those questions. So thinking back to photosynthesis, we need to talk about what does a plant need in order to do photosynthesis? So if you uh, remember, we talked about what gases they would need. I'm gonna flip back to a presentation here. Here's a picture that might help you. The blue arrows are photosynthesis here. So you'll notice CO2 is going in, oxygen's going out. And if you remember our equation for photosynthesis, we had to take CO2, plants need CO2. They also needed some water and they needed sunlight. In the end, they were going to make sugar and oxygen. So those are the things that we are using and also the things that we are making from photosynthesis. So if we talk about seeds doing photosynthesis, let's think first of all where a seed is. When you plant a seed, it's gonna be in the ground. When it's in the ground, it's not getting one of the things for photosynthesis. It's not getting sunlight. So seeds probably are not doing photosynthesis. They don't have sunlight available because they're underground. Next up, it says we're gonna look at germinating seeds and non-germinating seed. We need to figure out what the difference is between germinating and non-germinating. So you can just go ahead and describe what you're seeing in this picture. It doesn't have to be super correct. So we have, in order to determine if cellular respiration is occurring, we'll need to measure the amount of carbon dioxide produced. In the muscular activity lab, how did we measure the CO2 produced? So remember, we blew bubbles. You remember what we blew bubbles into? That solution. What was that blue stuff called? Yeah, it's called bromothymol blue. So we blew bubbles into bromothymol blue, and it turned yellow. Okay, and then we all had to do what? We had to add drops of something. We had to add drops of a base back, that sodium hydroxide base. So we were measuring using that base sodium hydroxide. So in the lab, we're gonna use a CO2 sensor and an O2 sensor to measure cellular respiration. Okay, so we have some data. We're gonna answer the questions below. We have some predictions first though. So our big questions are, do germinating seeds undergo cellular respiration? Remember the goal of cellular respiration is to take sugar and oxygen and to make energy. So germinating or growing seeds, non-germinating seeds. So what if they're not growing? What if they're just like the seeds you have laying around in a packet somewhere? Do they do cellular respiration? And then do you think temperature affects cellular respiration? So you can go ahead and write yes and no for those predictions. Doesn't matter if they're correct. So we're gonna be looking at some data here. This is kind of the setup we're gonna have when we're looking, when we're getting our data here. So we're gonna have some seeds, some peas or beans here. We can have germinating ones and it's gonna measure the CO2, it's gonna measure the oxygen. We need to know if they're doing cellular respiration. Remember, if they're doing cellular respiration, they're using oxygen, getting rid of CO2. And so these detectors can detect that. So before we look at our actual data, let's look at what it might mean when we get our data. So if we're doing cellular respiration, what happens to CO2? So remember, we do cellular respiration as humans. We're taking in oxygen, we're getting rid of CO2. So if a seed is taking in oxygen and getting rid of CO2, what do we think is gonna happen to the amount of CO2 that that seed is giving off? It would increase, yeah. So 
Again, because they're using the oxygen, they're making CO2. And so which graph is gonna show us that increase? Probably be B, right? Starts off slow and gets higher. So now we're gonna go a little math here. If we had to measure the slope, would it be positive or negative here? So if it's going up, it's gonna be positive. So when we get our data, again, this is just some pre-stuff so that we know when we get our data, we're gonna be looking at the slope to see what did it increase or decrease, right? And is the slope positive or negative? That will give us some info. So now, see it's doing cellular respiration, what's gonna to happen to the oxygen? So we're using oxygen for cellular respiration, so what's gonna to happen to the oxygen? It's gonna go down. So which graph is gonna show that? That would be A. It's decreasing. And if it's going down, what's my slope gonna be? It's going to be negative. All right, so let's look at one last thing here before we actually get our data. So if the line on the graph of CO2 is really, really steep, what would that tell you about the rate of CO2 production? So let's say the line is really, really steep. So would it tell us that the carbon dioxide being made really fast or really slow? If it goes up really steep, that would be fast because it starts at a small number and it quickly jumps up to a high number. So which is our really steep line here? That'd be letter A. All right. The opposite here. What if oxygen had a really steep slope? Right, we said oxygen was being used, so it's really steep. Does that mean it's being used at a fast or a slow rate? Being used at a fast rate. Yeah, and which one shows it really steep? Going down, sharp decline, letter D. And what if there was no cellular res respiration happening? What do you think would our graphs would look like? We've got one for CO2, one for oxygen. If no CO2 was being used, no oxygen was being, or no CO2 was being produced, no oxygen was being used, it would just be a flat line. So we're going to use this information to let us know if cellular respiration is happening. Is it a flat line? Then it isn't happening. If it's above or below a flat line, if it has a slope that's positive or negative, we're going to have cellular respiration happening. All right, so you're gonna answer the next questions on enzymes, and then we're gonna look at our data here. So for example, we've got germinating seeds at room temperature, and you'll notice this is our CO2, it's increasing. Our oxygen is decreasing. So we're using oxygen, we're producing CO2. So my question is, is cellular respiration happening here? Yeah, because it's not zero, our slope's not zero. So when we go down to our questions here, it says, do germinating seeds at room temperature perform cellular respiration? We can go ahead and say yes, and we wanna reference the slope, right? The slope of the CO2 graph is 17, which means CO2 is being made, and the slope of the oxygen is negative 0.4, which means oxygen is being used. So you're gonna do the following for the rest of the questions, and then you'll be done.